Okay. Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. K. Happy Tuesday to you. Our paper mache journey continues. I hope you had some good success with the gooiness of the recipe yesterday. And I hope the gooiness of the recipe in combination with the prepared strips of paper gave you good success and helped you refine and, and shape your animal face so that it is a bit more detailed today than it was yesterday. So here's my goal. Uh, my goal today is just to point out some of the things that I have done since we last met. And then I'm going to give you the rest of today, which will be Tuesday, in order to make that happen. When you make some more changes today to your animal face, hopefully it will dry and become sturdy. And tomorrow, which will be Wednesday, I'd like to explore some detailing of the face with some paint, some homemade paint. And um, again, if you have the ingredients, that's going to be wonderful. If you don't, we will work something out. Okay, so uh, here's what I want to do. I want to point out that I've made several changes to the puppy dog face since you saw it last. Okay, I built out this ear to the left, my left, and um, I tried to match it up to the right ear, the ear to my right, and um, I did a pretty good job. Okay, it's still, it's not 100% dry, so I am sort of handling it with care, okay? And um, we'll talk about a way to speed up and expedite the uh, dry time towards the end of the video today, okay? So uh, I evened up my ears, and I don't know if you can see the yellowishness of the snout here. What I did was I took heavy layers of that goopy homemade paper mache paste and I smoothed it over the snout to cover up large portions of the paper. And that will give us a smoother surface with which to paint tomorrow. And also, let me set this down. Like I said, it's still a little gooey, so I still might get a little bit of residue on my fingers. No big deal. Um, I, I took strips of paper also, like the, the strip here, and um, I tore them. And I'm not actually going to do it because my hands are fairly clean. And um, I don't even have um, my paste here, to be honest with you. So um, what I would do is I would put uh, the, the paper that I have torn into the mixture and you can see that when you put it on the surface of the animal itself you are very well able to smooth it around and shape it around the the face of the animal. In fact what I've done is if I can turn it upside down a little bit you can see that I've built out a little bit of a neck uh, to the bottom of the creature and then if I turn it the whole way around to the back, you can see that um, this U-shape here is all added on strips of paper. So just another little way of refining our project and making it a little smoother and better able to be painted tomorrow. Speaking of the back, here's a profile, and you can see that um, the back has remained relatively flat, which will give us an excellent surface uh, to which uh, we can attach it and adhere it to uh, some kind of a cardboard backing or a wooden block perhaps, okay? Um, look right here, you can also see that I have a, uh, a smooth strip of paper that has been formed over the upper portion of the animal head. Um, and you can see that, um, you know, that, that helps to patch up a lot of the 
uh, little inconsistencies in the the cracks and crevices that um, the the flower mixture sometimes leaves on the surface. Okay, the uh, the ears are not perfect. They're a little harder to deal with because. Uh, there's not as large a uh, surface area with which to work. So, um, you know, the ears will get a little more crinkly, I guess, and uh, crumbly for you, but that's okay. Um, the, uh, the paint will help us patch up any, um, any little inconsistencies or any little mistakes, okay? So uh, here's what I want you guys to do today. Take your mix. I hope you have one more day's worth left in your little container. If not, um, remember, just you can you can add to it by um, smaller um, smaller um, uh, measurements from the original. Um, you can take, you know, like for example, I took. Uh, half a cup of flour and mixed it with half a cup of water. As long as you got one part each, it should be okay. All right, so uh, do some patching and do some refining and do some adding in certain spots and see if you can't get your uh, animal face ready for some homemade paint tomorrow. And one last thing I'm going to say is um, if you want to speed up the dry time, you know, expedite the process a little bit, pull in a, uh, with mom's permission, pull in a hair dryer and uh, hit that up with some dry heat from uh, the blow dryer and that will um, really, really speed up the process. You don't have to do that, but if you're impatient like I sometimes am, uh, that's a little trick that you can uh, use to help you move it along a little more quickly. All right, kiddos, so remember, do a good job. Take pride in your work. Um, by the end of today, which will be Tuesday, you will have a more detailed and uh, greater defined animal face, whatever your animal is, dog, cat, lion, giraffe, fox, bear, could be something mythological, could be something prehistoric, doesn't matter as long as you're making a good attempt and uh, work from a resource visual, you know, have a reference photo. I remember I was showing you mine was on my phone. So um, do a good job and tomorrow we'll talk some more about adding even more details by way of homemade paint. Okay, be good. Do something uh, helpful and kind for somebody today, and we'll be talking very, very soon, and I guess I should say happy sculpting, and clean up your mess, too, okay? Don't leave a mess for your mom or dad or whomever, okay? All right, talk to you soon. Thanks, kiddos. Bye now.